eye opening, mind blowing. Yeah, so the woman who just walked in, the lady, sorry. Oh. <laughs> she, she's one of the research team members. I think she knows her way. It looked, was it difficult to find? Okay. But good that you came. We acknowledge you. Thank you for the hard work. Yes, as well, these two guys were the VDOT supervisors, so I asked them to come and listen to the work. They worked so hard. They know it, but thank you so much for your saving the family for the great work that you did. Thank you uh, for that wonderful presentation. Of course, they are in time for the comments and questions. Yes, probably they will be the ones to answer. <laughs> so directly yeah. answer the questions to them. So after that, the meeting, uh, so the right that we receive some comments and questions, uh, we will take them in sets. Probably uh, five questions the comments are set at the beginning now. Uh, <coughs> yes, sir. Mine is about uh, the blue button. So, more than somebody said about 10 tablets. Did they send 10 videos or, or they sent one? Because we swap at a different rate. So, there's a possibility. I mean, put in two, mm -hmm. throw it the rest. Mm -hmm. So, how did you get a video? Okay, so, one video. Yeah, do, you, do you want all the questions? Okay. Fine. I, I hope I won't forget. No, right. Okay. Thanks. <laughs> Any other? Uh, yeah. Normally, I do this if I pass. Mine was about if the app was able to save the video uh -huh. or to assign a unique ID to a video uh -huh. so that the patient does not keep sending the same video mm -hmm. as if it is unique, yet he has their they are fine of videos too. Thank you. My question was also along the lines that does the app uh, identify and did stamp the video so the same video is not used all the time? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. yes, thank you very much. I, I, I wanted to comment about the integrity of the video. What were the minimum contents in the video the patients required to save? in order to know that actually the patient took the drugs. <coughs> the other one is who paid the wrong drug, what person who paid. Okay. And, uh, you have to move like this. Okay. Do you have any adverse treatment effects? Mm -hmm. And how did you answer? Reporting? Yes. Separate to ask you, okay. Okay, yeah, mine is, uh, we know that uh, bias is the biggest thing in research, so I just want to know how you are able, how will you go about overcoming such a bias in this study? Uh, I was just uh, what we thought at the point in time when you had to ask people to have comparison experiences with DOT and DOT. So was it part of your criteria to include people who are going to be quite ever had watch so that they can have an experience to compare with or because if it's my first time because I'll tell you this is like the best thing you ever get I don't have something to compare. Okay. Okay, so can we take yeah, a we'll come back for another okay. Okay, so I'll start with the first question. So in case I lose uh, some of the question, please forgive me, and you can repeat if you don't mind. Uh, so about the number of videos, we had one video per day, per, per dose for the day. So we trained our patients on how to record. So we actually developed what we call the pill mat. Was that the pill mat? Yeah. Uh, Julia helped me to, to develop that. And so we had a pill mat and the patient will get their pills for the day. So if they are in intensive phase, how many pills would, that, would those be for intensive? Do you remember how many pills? Are they four? Okay, so get the pills, place them here on the pill mat, place your glass of water on the pill mat, set, start your app, hold it, hold the video, and start taking one by one. So we knew the patient who is in intensive phase has four pills, Take, so they'll put one pill, two pill, where they have the video running, and then swallow. Okay, they'll, they'll take one pill, swallow. And second pill, swallow. Some people know how to put all of them, but we ask them to specifically place 
place the pins so that we can see them on the tongue, right? And then they will, they will send a video after all the pins are recorded. So it was one video per person, per dose. Does that answer your question? Uh, yes. Okay. Yes. Because my example, you look at them, they are, mm -hmm. so they will take around 15 tablets. Right? Yes. Yeah. So somebody puts 15 tablets on the pill, and some right. people put it at their own. Yeah. So in yeah. So in this particular pilot, we focus on drug susceptible TB. Yeah. Because we're trying to learn, can this even work? Can the patients even take this up, use it to send us information about their adherence? That was the basic premise. So with the complexity of the MDR dosing and of course with injections, now I know they are going to change to all oral, right? Bruce, is that is that correct? Yeah, so that would be some advantage that we can maybe use V dot. But before that was injections and then pills, very hard to capture that. So maybe then you shift the information, you shift the, um, the efforts from the pill, the drug susceptible. They send videos and then focus on the ones who need uh, the supervision, which is the MDR. So again, that's it. that's all you can do. And then the app. Uh, would in people recycle the videos? That's what you're asking. So the app is set in such a way that it's, it's got a timestamp. The video comes with a, a timestamp and it assigns a unique identifier for every video that comes. So a person records a video, it disappears. The moment they hit submit, it disappears. They can't even go back to their phone to see it. It hangs in the cloud if they don't have internet. If it does have internet, it hits the system. And that's where it is. It will sit there at the same time that it has been recorded, and the, uh, the time it has been recorded, and the time it has been sent. Even capturing the amount of time the person spent recording the video. Okay. So then there is no, no, no risk for recycling uh, the videos. And I think that's what the same question that Mary had, right? Mary. And then what? What was the other one? The integrity of the videos. Is that somebody asked about the integrity of the videos? Can you? Please repeat that. The, the minimum, how, when would you say that this video is going to be the ideal in marks that uh, yeah. mm -hmm. you say that that's what I think you answered. But my question was about when do I say that the video has uh -huh. been sent? Right. The person has actually shown the drugs. Yeah, so, so we, we had a step by step process that we trained the patients. If you're in intensive phase, you have, uh, if you're in continuation, you have two pills, is that correct? Put your pills out. Open them, put them on the mat, get your water. It's not like you're studying the video and then you're running to get your cup of water and then you're, oh, where are my pills? No. Set everything on the mat. The mat was kind of an organizer, an organizing tool. Very simple with colors and with English and Uganda. Take a makerenda go and then so the people could follow. It was just a little mat. I wish I, I, I could have shown it up here. I didn't. And then, so once they do that, then they start taking one pill at a time. And once they're done, of course we have the data on who is on continuation and who is on intensive. We can easily validate that just through our dashboard. That somebody, uh, we saw them taking three, two pills, then in, in continuation phase. And then the other, yes, Julius wanted to add something. Yes. The other thing we were advising them to talk in the video so that we can prove that the medicine they put in the mouth uh -huh. has been followed yes. at the end. Yeah. Because it was supposed to be your own talk. Of course, you put the of course we don't to put them behind the cheek and all that. But yeah, so at least that was one way. Because we would tell them to report, report whether they had any side effects, and then report when they are done. They say, Kat Musa or Maze, Mere Dagala, you know? So that talking, I mean, the pill would be stuck somewhere, but somebody could intentionally do that if they really didn't want to spit it out. Mm -hmm. So you can't rule out those kind of things, but I would imagine if somebody has taken the time to record, they are doing extra work yeah. to put it in the mouth and then spit it out only after the video is done. So adverse effects. So adverse effects, as we kind of have answered that, we, we ask patients to report. So in our mat, in our instruction manual, we say, okay, Open the, uh, the video, the app, report if you have any side effects. And then we listed the commonest with pictures. We did, we developed some um, pictorial brush, 
drawing pens and we put pictures. I really, really wish we should have shown this here, but we didn't. So we put it uh, as easy as possible, the common side effects of TB, we didn't capture all of them. But then at least they see joints, there was a nyingo, uh, or susu, or okubabu kida, you know, so we put those things there so that it could trigger them to report at the beginning. And so they would say that in the video, and my, my colleagues would pick that information and put it in the system as they watch the video. So it was, it was easy to capture that. Uh, selection bias. So selection bias, of course, is always a question an epidemiologist wants to answer. We set out not to test hypotheses, but to generate hypotheses. So feasibility is about generating hypotheses. Does this work? We were not testing this being more effective. Does it, we didn't have been part to do any of the statistical testing. So our goal was not to test any hypothesis, but to first ensure does this work. Yes, we definitely had some selection bias because we're in Lubaga, which is sort of a paying hospital, but for TB it's free. So you can argue that people who come to Lubaga, even though it's free, are more likely to be more, a little bit high ACS. Yeah? Yes. Yeah, definitely then that's who is selected at that point. We, we didn't do much to try and address because that's the setting where we're going to do and that's where most of our studies are so we started there but definitely <coughs> that's why in the future studies we want to randomize we a randomized control uh, trial to try and take care of all uh, the confounding and the biases that might arise through selection but, but yeah that's that's a valid point and then comparison of v dot and dot yes so I told you that we got some people who had already started treatment. There were some uh, maybe second month or third month, because that is our, our criteria. Anyone who has been on treatment up to three months would qualify to be. So that's one category. Some of them have already experienced DOT. But for the ones who had an experience, we kind of gave them a preamble. As we were training them and saying, look, this is what is done currently. We start treatment. The healthcare worker is supposed to watch you and supervise you, come to your home or meet you at your workplace. So of course it was more perceptions, maybe, because those who hadn't experienced it. And we had to, we can tease apart and see who was already on treatment, those who were already experiencing the in-person DOT, and the ones who were new. We did have very many people who were just like really starting treatment at the beginning. Those are the ones who probably <coughs> would experience the in-person DOT. So they probably were just really perceiving from what we had explained to them, the in-person DOT looks like. Okay, so I think that's, that covers the first set of yeah. questions, and then um, if we have time, of course, Winters, you'll tell me when, when to stop yeah, talking. Yeah, uh, thank you so much for the wonderful presentation. Um, this uh, video don't actually promises to be a game changer in ideas and a um, number of researchers are trying to really improve um, this, like, you know, this innovation. Right. And I, I, I probably just wanted to contribute a few things that probably might point towards scaling up. Mm -hmm. And it was nice to see also that you had actually some, you had some of these things that had already matched. Okay. Uh, but yes, the, 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 the problem of, of, of charging phones and being in places of block shedding and stuff like that. Yeah. The good thing actually is that already people are innovating, so they're already uh, solar power banks actually are available. So actually people in the villages can mm -hmm. still get those solar power banks. Mm -hmm. And I also like the, 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 the potential to protect people's jobs mm -hmm. because you don't have to be attached to a health center, you know, to go for DOT. You can be a truck driver and keep recording your videos and sending them. Uh, but the, maybe just one question I wanted to ask if you had encountered some patients who had issues with nausea and vomiting mm. and if that affected the duration of the video, um, uh, even going forward is probably something to think about because I think some people who have been in DOT will tell you sometimes DOT can take one hour, not just a few seconds because, uh, and, then, and, and then maybe to follow that is 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 there is there a time within which you would think you would want to contact the patient if you don't see their video because then you wouldn't know if the patient vomited the medicine or not. Okay. Um, um, yes, that issue of nausea vomiting is, is 
Yeah. Okay. Th thank you for, for your question, but I, I, as I was looking down at my list, I realized somebody had asked who paid. But who, who asked that? Yes, okay, so sorry I, I skipped that, no, not intentionally. But I will just give you a quick summary of what, what we did. We really pre we provided MDs for data for the patients to be able to have internet, because they needed internet to have the, the video set. And of course, starting out, I thought, oh, maybe this is going to be really expensive to provide MBs, but then we use the smallest amount of MBs, the, the 350, is that 350 MBs, mm -hmm. and we supplied that for a weekly. So the patient was able to receive with uh, one of the guys who's not here, Nicholas. So we had people who were on Airtel and people who were on MTN. So the Airtel one, the bundle cost 3,500, and the MTN one cost 5,000. So slightly different, you know, more expensive, and I think they give a bundle of 500 MBs. So M MTN you get 500 MBs for 5,000. So which means that a bundle I think it costs about 100 shillings or? Yeah, yeah so that 10 shillings. Yeah, so, so you can see we would supply and send them MBs. The usual way people do send, share MBs and all that. So we had one person controlling that and sending them to the patients. If you're on Airtel, you get your quota weekly. And then if you're on MTN, you get your 500 MBs. And that was enough. Actually, more than enough. Right now, we're doing the cost analysis to see what did it cost us in terms of MBs and supplying that part, because that's the technology aspect. So the third aim, as you saw, was to evaluate the feasibility by cost, operations, and technology infra infrastructure. But what surprised me was I did a quick preliminary analysis, and I wanted to just get a gut feeling, because if I'm asking anyone of you to pay for at least 10 patients, I can give you a number that you work with. It cost about four excuse me, four dollars to pay for a patient one month for MBs. So what does that translate to for six months? Twenty-four dollars. Is that doable? No? Yes, maybe? Is that a doable cost given what they have to pay, transportation and all the hassles? Yeah, so put it in the context of the transportation. Now they have to jump on a border border, meet wherever they are going to supervise them, and you give them $24 for six months in, in terms of MBs, right? So that was the cost. Of course, we have to think about other costs that come in, but that's what we pay the patient to supervise them. Yeah, so anyway, some more questions, I guess, if you need to close, you close. Bruce, you have a question? Yes. That's the whole thing. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me, actually. It's interesting. I'm going to give a little bit of the story of how I ended up here because I met Bruce somewhere and we started chatting and then he invited me here. So thank you. I really appreciate you having invited me. Thank you for honoring the invitation. Yeah. This is a very important pilot. I hope you allow us to use it as our own pilot when we are writing things because many times this data was missing. Yeah. And sometimes we don't have the capacity to Pilots. Right. No, I'm, I'm definitely open to. That's actually funny. How can we have capacity to write the big projects but we have no for pilots? But you find sometimes when you're in a situation, right. the grant has come, you don't have time to do the pilot. Yeah. But you want to apply for a big grant. Yeah. So having data like this, which is from our country, cannot be a big project. Yeah. Um, already there is EDCT which has come out okay. a few days ago, mm -hmm. and I know people may want to apply, so this is very important. Okay. If you allow us to use the Oh yes, uh, definitely just uh, let me know. And, and yes. uh, 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 this, this is a, a paper that's about to be sent out for publication like in weeks or days even. So, yeah, so. But, uh, but even then, I have some concerns. Of course, everything has some concerns. Yeah. As a senior clinician who has been practicing here, I will tell you what we are doing. Yeah. <coughs> we actually think you are helping us, but you may cause us problems. Yeah. <laughs> because what have we been doing in reality? We have diagnosed with TB. What do we do? We say, come here. You have TB. These are your drugs. Where is your brother? Or do you have a brother at home here? Your drugs go home. Mm -hmm. Let's see you in two weeks and get your class. Okay. Now, you come to help us, give us your computer. The other computer showed in the picture. Mm -hmm. Now we have to read these videos, we have to send MBs, we have to give these lessons. 
I think you may actually find that in the practical level, at the clinical, clinic level, you may actually cause us more problems with this. However, of course I'm trying to make a joke. No, <laughs> okay, so you should laugh. I know, <laughs> I know we need to observe, the standard is we should observe all the treatments. Okay. But we have lived with our shortcuts for a long time. Yes, yes, yes. And, yes, yes. We, and we finish our line, and we go home in what? Peace. Okay. So when these things come, we need also to be oriented okay. uh, on what is, what is happening. So you to look into that. Um, so I really, are you talking about uh, focusing on capacity building uh, in the healthcare system to train who has been doing the in-person DOT to yes. reorient them to Actually, shift? mindset. Mindset. So when this thing finally shows it works, okay. then you take it to Ministry of Health. Then they buy all these computers. Just to know that you have to come back to us and change our mind. Mm. You have not actually solved our problem. You have actually added us more work. Mm. Because the other time we had our patient for three minutes, showed them their trans, and saw them in two weeks. Now we have videos to check every day, we have to send them in please, we have to train them. This is actually what happens in these advancements. Yes. So we need to change our mindset. Mm -hmm. The way we look at this thing. Because what actually we expect we are doing that we are seeing these people every day, we are not seeing them every day. That's true. Um, there's another small comment, uh, which actually will address, but I want to be sure. Okay. When this video is taken, mm -hmm. it is locked and it is inopenable. It is gone. Gone. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, our wives and girlfriends won't come checking these videos. <laughs> no one of the big discussion of the wife and the boyfriend is to check your video when you are sick. If you are not doing this, then you are not doing your job. Okay. So, this is how you should do this. You find the time to not check that phone. Okay. So, if I have been taking, having my pills somewhere, having my pills, of course I lied that my brother is going to to supervise me, but of course I will tell my brother if I can. These are my drugs, I will take them. Give me alone, one of my business. I keep them in my, I take my drugs. No one will ever know. Yes. But now there are these videos, if they are being stored on my phone, then someone can open. But that is a late. Yeah. These things, they are, once they have gone, they are gone. never find them on the phone. But even if they are not open, if they are still there, someone can, oh, what are these things? <laughs> Or they give it to them yeah, no. and they say, eh, they have to go through the app, remember? You have to go through the app to, to reach the, the, the video. Mm -hmm. But then there's a pin, a password, which somebody, only the person who is operating that. Yeah, but you know in home, there are no pins. Yeah. <laughs> okay. The pin is open. This yeah. is my pin. This okay, okay. These are the original Yeah, so but no, no, no. Talk to your patients a bit more. Yeah, I agree. But at least we didn't run in any of that because no one came and said, Oh, my husband was looking at my videos. They reported, they say, My husband was, or my spouse was asking, Do you want to say something? Yeah, one, a, a few of the patients wanted to take their videos with their spouse. Okay. Selfie. Yeah, like you invite your spouse to be a part of the video so that they can. Yeah, that's, that's social support, right? Yeah. And social support is one thing that we really encourage, right? And that's actually my next point. Okay. While this video may remove, may have the patients take drugs, right. the original treatment supporter has the human face. Mm -hmm. They put you on pressure or they supported you, right. unlike the video. But I have also learned from the presentation that an SMS came. Yes. So it's not like you are all alone with your video. Mm -hmm. And they also knew that they had, they actually had a, a number to call if they need, if they needed ah, to talk. Some yes, if they needed. So, to call. so of course, the effect in the big trial on the removing of that human component, mm -hmm. in of course, the big trial will be assessed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And lastly, this one is very interesting. Mm -hmm. Now, these, these fellows, who thirty percent of them, they had phones, but they were not comfortable. Mm. Even calling, what were they doing with these phones? It's possible <laughs> some of them, you know, every day people are wearing phones, mm. right? So some of them were just new acquirers. A new type of phone or? Yeah, so somebody might have just bought a phone, or bought a present, or just acquired a phone and they're just learning. So especially the older people, my daughter is teaching me. My daughter is still teaching me how to use this phone. Right. I'm learning. So we had that from the older age group. They just bought a present, 
and they are teaching me how to manipulate or to navigate the phone. Well, yeah. Some form of resentment. What's that? Does it not some form of resentment? For resentment from who to who? For because this is a procedure which looks like it's an invasion of one's privacy. Okay. And the tethering of one to sixty. Whose boundaries you are not sure. sure. Mm -hmm. Ah, that's the matter. These videos, where do they go? Where do they go? Yeah. So in our training, we try to address those questions. So that's why we, the training is important. So then you have the patients ask those questions. Where will they go? We show them, and the first, actually the first video, we had them take it at the clinic. Right? We enroll them. They have come to refill their prescription. We tell them, okay, take the medicine, go through the steps, show us that you have understood, and then come this way. See your video is here. Now we can see it. Do you see yourself watching the medicine? This is what they're going to do. So we gave them a quick demo. And most of them left, I mean, all of them really, no one complained. They, they left and they were very comfortable. They knew the video is going to pass somewhere in cyberspace and then land here, and the provider is going to see it and watch it. Yeah. Uh, we are running short of time. <laughs> There's one hand that has been here, I think, a burning question. Okay, I, I would almost and guess. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, thank you. Yeah, yeah, in line with even what Dr. Bruce was bringing to the board. You know, it's like these people have been, someone has really been like a, like a motivator, telling them to take the drugs and what have you. And so now this one, I, I, I want to imagine that these people were really coached. I, I, I might want to use that. Eh? They were coached and uh, I don't know, maybe with that they became excited or something such that they were cautious about taking maybe the right time and that kind of thing. Right? But then in life scenario, I mean just in your right practical, the, 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 the real life issue, mm. uh, what would be the motivator, what would motivate this person to take, I mean maybe really say that I'm taking this, I'm thinking of a scenario where someone has gone for a party somewhere mm. and then he, maybe, yes, I don't know, what? Yeah, so, yeah. Oh, yeah, so um, my question is really about uh, I think the, the number, the proportion of uh, people who owned phones was really high. But uh, I imagine from the presentation you mentioned that you loaned some phones to them and it was actually over 50%. So uh, I'm imagining the number is quite high that owns phones, but many of them actually don't own smartphones. I'm looking at it broadly. For example, you know, we have to scale up the, the dots. How would we deal with this population that do not own smartphones? Would it be like a lost opportunity? Or if we are to do to loan phones to all of them, uh, what is the cost that will go into that? Yes. <coughs> now, uh, when I'm taking the pigs, using the mat, you are uh, uh, forcing me to take four tablets, one at a time. <coughs> Personally, when I'm taking Kawati, I prefer putting all the four pills in the mouth mm -hmm. and swallow. So if you yeah. insist in place, you need to take one at a time. Are you not coercing me? Okay. I guess we just take these ones. Okay. Uh, maybe all my questions. We'll have a tick break and that's all those questions. Okay, yeah. And I should have put my email on. Yeah, we can share our contacts if, if people need to follow up. Let me start with yours. So, we were not forcing people to take pills a certain way. The way we trained the patients, we had a discussion uh, finding out this information. What time do you normally take your medicines? Is it morning? Is it during the day? Is it at night? Okay, that helped us to set when we are going to send them reminders, okay? So that was step one. Somebody says at nine, we set their reminder at eight. To come in an hour earlier. So you see, so we are letting the patients kind of decide when and where. And then the number of pills was mostly, if you're in intensive phase, you take, you put your four tabs in. Show them to us. How you take them, whether you take all four, you should show us that you're picking all four and putting them in your mouth at once. We didn't really care that you have to do one swallow. No, no, no. Even though that's what I used, but it wasn't anything like that. So if you prefer to put all four of them, the key thing is that the video is showing us that you've picked all your four, they are here on the mat, and 
can spit all of them and put them in your mouth. If you want to swallow them all at once, fine. And then the other one was scale up. Okay, so scale up, that's why I pulled this back. That is going to be a problem of yesterday, for sure. People are going to acquire these smartphones. The, the emerging markets are producing uh, cheap smartphones, and before you know, they are going to cost like nothing. They are going to be cheap. Not 100% of the population will have, but I can tell you it's going to be a good proportion of patients even owning their own smartphones. So 96% reported they had a cell phone, 70% said they had a smartphone. But for quality assurance, we had a, a, a minimum standard to carry the app, to operate the app. So we had to look, does this a smartphone that you own actually meet the standard to carry the app and operate the app? So that's why you saw now we dropped and had to provide even smartphones to people who actually have their own smartphones. Yes, the quality was not up to what we were expecting. And I'm not really worried about the scale-up issue in terms of phones. The program can decide to buy phones, but I really think that we'll come to a point when patients will actually have their own phones. And that would be like one of the least problems that we we'll worry about providing phones for patients. That's my take. I don't know the people in the program. Tell me who, who are kind of in this setting. Robert, you, what's your take? I think you, you well explained it. They are within the program, we seem to, to be moving at a certain place. Mm. At least in the, in the newer tools, mm -hmm. we actually have an option of measuring this. Mm -hmm. So, so I think as, as you look at the data that is taken about us about availability, there is also the measurement aspect. So over time, I think we shall catch up with the Yeah, Robert is a technical advisor, national TV program. So he's the person I would look to to answer this kind of question. So, and somebody asked about motivation, right? Yeah, what would be the motivation? I'm going to throw this question back to you. Would you be motivated to take video, to use video, to videos to monitor your treatment? Yeah, 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 of course I would be motivated. But you know, what, what was motivating? Yes, I, 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 I may be okay. That, like as I said, since I was coached, eh? yes, and it may be, I, I was told that uh, this is really a study that we are whatever we can. Eh? But then now, like it's like when we are putting it across board. Eh? Yeah. What, what would it be, I mean, that, that would motivate the people? That's what, what, what I was saying. Eh? Yeah. Yeah. So, and then how would they, I mean, like now what I was comparing was where we have been using someone trying really to ensure that this person takes the drugs. Eh? Yeah. Maybe at the right time, okay, given yeah. that scenario. So that's what I was saying. Yeah, so the supporters actually need incentives, right? And one of the reasons that model has not worked, it's, it's not well supported, it's not sustainable. If you have how many, 47,000 TB patients that are reported each year, thereabouts, am I right in the numbers? That's still with 57. 57. So yeah, the last report I saw 47. So how many nurses do we have to do that? Or how many even support supporters in the community are able to do that? They need incentives. They need, you don't, I mean, they do pro bono work sometimes, but I can't see them doing this forever. Most times that model doesn't work, it works to some extent. Yes, they are motivated to go and supervise fellow community members, but at some point they are like, I also have other things to do, I have to make a living, and so. For the patients, if we train them well and they understand why they need to finish their treatment, they take it, and then what, one of the things I think we told them was, look, we know you can take the treatment on your own. And, you know, for dogs, people are actually taking treatment on their own, as Bruce was saying, you give them their two months, you tell them, come back. Some do it. But if the patient comes back with MDR, are you able to tell me objectively that they took their treatment? You don't have any objective measure. So you have to make a case for what is going to benefit the system, but it's also going to benefit you. Because if you show that you take your treatment, should you get any other problems, then we know where to start. So this person knows that you're really caring about their health, you want them to get well, and so all this information you're collecting is a feedback loop. It's feeding the system of information of what you're doing with your medicines, but then I also want to come back to you if you have side effects, then I'm going to help you, I'm going to support you. So for me, that's what I would say for the motivation. 
No, that remains in our system. Okay. It remains in the system. It doesn't stay on the patient's phone. Because, you know, for people who do M and E, if they are doing monitoring, monitoring and evaluation, they want to see that as real objective evidence, they have deleted the video. So it's a report. It's a data point. It's a sensitive to the person that, for example, I may become an MP in future after having been sick and that can be Okay, that's those are privacy. Those are those are privacy. It's the same way somebody can get your records from TB1. Yeah, but at least those ones that I can say same day, but video I the face. I, I, I get what you're saying. Yeah, so maybe that will be the discussion for another day. But th thank you so much guys. I really enjoyed hearing from you and you're giving me things to take a